it's time for Show Off, the quick thinking academic quiz show on CCP TV, the educational channel of Community College of Philadelphia. Jocelyn Circus, Director of Professional Development. Today we have two teams of CCP students competing to show off their knowledge about today's topic, English literature. On team one, we have Tyrone Johnson, Stephen Morasco, Brittany Ransom, and on team two, we have Wasim Amashadani, Matthew Hall, and Bonita C. Here's how the game is played. In the first round, I will ask a question directed at both teams. The first person to buzz in with the button in front of them will get to attempt to answer. If their answer is correct, they win a point for their team. If their answer is wrong, their team loses a point, and the other team gets 10 seconds to answer. If they guess correctly, their team earns one point, and if they are wrong, they lose a point. They may also pass and neither win nor lose a point. The team with the highest number of points at the end of the game wins. So. Are you ready to play Show Off? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Let's begin. First question. Who won the Nobel Prize in Literature in 2013? Was it A, Alice Munro, B, Philip Roth, C, Nugugi Watiango, or D, Haruki Murakami? <laughs> Matthew, team two. The answer is A, Alice Munro. Alice Munro, that's correct. <laughs> Monroe has published more than a dozen collections of short stories since the 1960s, often focusing on the lives of girls and women from the town and farming communities in her home region of southwestern on Ontario. The 82-year-old writer had to decline the invitation to appear at the Nobel ceremony, however, due to health issues. Next question. Who wrote Gulliver's Travels? Was it A, Ronald Dahl, B, Clive Staples Lewis? C, Jonathan Swift, or D, Edgar Rice Burroughs? <laughs> Stephen, team one. Uh, that would be C, Jonathan Swift. Jonathan Swift. <laughs> hey, that's correct. <laughs> <laughs> Jonathan, Jonathan Swift. He first published under the pseudonym Lemuel Gulliver. Gulliver's Travels is considered Swift's masterpiece. It was an instant bestseller. It is a timeless illustration of the pettiness of politics, people, and the games they play, and has inspired numerous sequels and been adapted to the stage and film, entering popular cultural iconography. Ready for the next question? <laughs> From Yellow is the title of which author's first novel? Is it A, E. Phillips Oppenheim, B, Aldous Huxley, C, D. H. Lawrence, or D, H. G. Wells? Contestants? All right, no one's answered that question. Let me tell you the answer. It's Aldous Huxley. Aldous Huxley was an English novelist and critic best known for his dystopian novel, Brave New World. Besides novels, he published travel books, histories, poems, plays, and essays on philosophy, arts, sociology, religion, and morals. OK, no one got to that point. Next question. How many lines make up the standard limerick? Is it A, one, B, two, C, 10, or D, five? <laughs> and it's Matthew, team two. The answer is D, five. D, five, that's correct, Matthew. <laughs> the standard form of a limerick is a stanza of five lines with the first, second, and fifth rhyming with one another. The limerick form was popularized by Ed Edward Lear in his first book of nonsense. Ready for our next question? Which of the following is not the name of one of the Bronte sisters? Is it A, Branwell, B, Emily, C, Charlotte, or D, Anne? <coughs> Tyrone, team one. A, Branwell. Branwell, that's correct. <laughs> Branwell was the sister's brother. He was a writer, poet, and painter best known for his portrait of his three literary sisters, Emily, Charlotte, and Anne. Maria, 
not listed as a potential answer, was also a sister, though she did not live to adulthood. Next question. Call me Ishmael is the opening line to which famous novel? Was it A, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe? B, Peter Pan? C, Moby Dick? Or D, Gulliver's Travels? <laughs> Matthew, team, team two. Uh, the answer is C, Moby Dick. That's correct. <laughs> perhaps one of the most, perhaps right. one of the most famous opening lines of all time, Call Me Ishmael refers to the biblically named narrator of Herman Melville's novels. The Broadway show West Side Story is a modern retelling of which famous Shakespeare play? Is it A, Hamlet, B, Romeo and Juliet, C, The Tempest, or D, The Taming of the Shrew? That's Tyrone, team one. Is it B, Romeo and Juliet? That's correct. West Side Story tells the tale of star-crossed lovers torn apart by their affiliation with rival New York City street gangs, the Sharks and the Jets. Other popular works have also been based upon Shakespeare plays. Disney's The Lion King is a modern retelling of Hamlet. The Broadway musical Kiss Me Kate is based upon the bard's Taming of the Shrew. And the cult favorite Forbidden Planet is a sci-fi film based upon Shakespeare's The Tempest. In J.K. Rowling's Harry Potter series, what is the name of the student who is Harry's rival at Hogwarts? Is it A, Voldemort, B, Draco Malfoy, C, Tom Riddle, or D, Ron Weasley? <coughs> Tyrone, time one. B, Draco Malfoy. Malfoy. That's correct, it is Draco Malfoy. <laughs> Throughout the Potter series, Draco Malfoy is portrayed as a snob, a racist, a bully, and a coward, and his character serves as a foil for Harry's. Next question. Published in 1968, this book, a collection of essays by Eldridge Cleaver, takes a candid look at the civil rights movement and the complexity of race, class, and gender interactions. What is the title? Is it A, Soul on Ice, B, The Souls of Black Folk, C, Go Tell It on the Mountain, or D, The Invisible Man? Sydney, team one. C, Go Tell It on the Mountain. Incorrect. Team two, it goes to you. You have 10 seconds. Do you have an answer? We're going to go with B, the souls of black folk. Mm, that's not correct either. The answer is soul on ice. <laughs> Eldridge Cleaver wrote soul on ice while serving time at Folsom Prison. The souls of black folk is the seminal work of W.E.B. Du Bois. Go Tell It on the Mountain was written by James Baldwin and The Invisible Man was written by Ralph Ellison. All are notable African-American authors. Okay, that was great. Let's look at the score, and it's neck and neck. Team one, three points. <laughs> Team two, two points. <laughs> well, it's a horse race going into the second round. Now let's find out a little more about these contestants. Okay, team one. We have there on the end, that's Tyrone Johnson, Tyrone. <laughs> Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Tell me about where you're from in Philadelphia, what you're studying here at the college. Well, I'm from North Philadelphia, and I'm currently in the Culture Science and Technology program, but I start in the nursing program in the fall of next year. Wonderful. Now, it says here, Tyrone, that you enjoy shopping. Tell me a little bit about that. What do you enjoy shopping for? Just clothes. I just get a thrill out of purchasing clothes. Anything, really anything shopping-wise, but clothes especially. Is that right? Are you a snappy dresser? Yes. Oh, there you go. Okay. <laughs> Next up, we have Stephen Morasco. Stephen, tell me a little bit about yourself. Where, what neighborhood are you from, and what are you doing here at CCP? Uh, I live in East Pass Yonk. I would say hi to my son, Junior. And uh, I'm a music major here at CCP. As, uh, at 51, I felt that was a really good career choice. <laughs> Very good. Good for you. I see here that you've tried out for Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Did, oh, yes. you, did you do that? Um, I did actually. Um, unfortunately, I I didn't get a chance to clean up before the uh, before the audition. So even though I answered a lot of the questions right, I think they 
you know, I wasn't quite right. <laughs> Not quite right for, for prime time. Okay, mm -hmm. and then we have Brittany Ransom. Hello, Brittany. Tell me a little bit about yourself. Tell me about what neighborhood you're from and what you're doing here at the college. Well, I currently live in University City, but I spent most of my life in Harrisburg, and I am a photo major. Wonderful. Tell me a bit about that. What kind of photography do you enjoy? What do you like to take pictures of? Uh, well, for the past two years, I've been dealing mostly with newborns and early childhood pictures. So. Ah, wonderful. Is that very rewarding for you? It's a lot of fun. Probably a lot, a lot of fun <laughs> and very nice for the parents to have that as a memento, yes? Oh, yes. Wonderful. Okay, let's get ready to start round two. This second round works the same way as the first, except that a correct answer is now worth two points. An incorrect answer still only costs the team one point. Okay, then. Everyone ready? Yes. Yes. Let's start round two of show off. <laughs> Question one. What is the past participle form of the verb begin? Is it A, begun, B, began, C, beginning, or D, to begin? Is that Tyrone on, ty on team one? <laughs> is it B, began? Began, and that's incorrect. It goes to team two. Uh, the answer is A, begun. A, begun, that's correct. Part of the clues are used in the perfect tense and in passive voices. For example, we would say, she had begun her studies at the college, or the song was begun by a choir. Let's go on to the next question. In the following sentence, what literary device is being used? The summer sun seemed somber as it sank below the horizon. Is that A, alliteration, B, anthropomorphism, C, cacophony, or D, onomatopoeia? Team two, Wasim. I'm going with A, alliteration. That's correct. <laughs> alliteration occurs when a similar sound is repeated in a sentence or phrase. Edgar Allan Poe used alliteration when he wrote The Raven, which begins, once upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered weak and weary. Ready for the next question? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. How would you write the sentence, he sleeps, in the future perfect, is it A? He will have slept. B, he is going to sleep. C, he will sleep. Or D, he will be sleeping. <laughs> Matthew, team two. Uh, the answer is A, he will have slept. That is correct. <laughs> he will have slept. The future perfect tense is used to indicate an action that will be completed sometime in the future. He will have slept indicates both that the action will occur in the future and that the action will be fully completed. Very good. Next question. Which of the following Latin words or phrases can be roughly translated as my bad? Is it A, persona non grata, B, antebellum, C, mea culpa, or D, ad nauseum? And it's Steve, team uh, one. The answer is C, mea culpa. See, mea culpa. <laughs> mea culpa translates to my fault. Mea, of course, translates as my, and culp is the Latin root for fault. Our English word culpab culpability, meaning fault, is derived from the Latin root culp. Okay, next question. Who wrote Frankenstein or the modern Prometheus? Was it A, Lord Byron, B, John Polidori, C, Percy Shelley, or D, Mary Shelley? <laughs> and it's Wasim on team two. That would be D, Mary Shelley? D, Mary Shelley. <laughs> Mary Shelley began writing her famous science fiction novel when she was just 19. It was published when she was 21 and became an immediate bestseller. All right, next question. Which of the following is not the title of a Stephen King novel? Is it A, Cujo, B, Christine, C, The Shining, or D, Silence of the Lambs? <laughs> and it's Brittany on team one. <laughs> Steve, Silence of the Lambs. That's correct. <laughs> Silence of the Lambs. Stephen King has published 50 novels, many of them thrillers. 
He's sold over 350 million books and forced nearly as many fans to go to sleep with the lights on. One of the most successful authors of our time, many of King's novels have been turned into movies, including The Shawshank Redemption and The Green Mile. The Silence of the Lambs was written by Thomas Harris, who is also considered a great talent, but who has only written five novels. Very good, next question. Which epic hero defeated a monster named Grendel? Was it A, Gollum, B, Homer, C, Beowulf, or D, King Arthur? <laughs> Wasim on team two. That would be uh, Beowulf. That's correct, it's Beowulf. <laughs> Beowulf. This epic poem, set in Scandinavia and written in Old English sometime between the 8th and 11th centuries, is over 3,000 lines long and considered one of the greatest works of Anglo-Saxon literature, unless you're in the ninth grade and are stuck reading Beowulf, in which case it's probably not <laughs> one of the greatest works of literature. All right, next question. The Wife of Bath's Tale is one story in which collection is it A, the Canterbury Tales, B, the Ring Trilogy, C, the Lord of the Rings Trilogy, or D, Selected Prose of T.S. Eliot? <laughs> and that's Matthew on Team 2. Uh, the answer is A, the Canterbury Tales. That's correct. <laughs> The Canterbury Tales by Geoffrey Chaucer was written at the end of the 14th century during the 100 Years' War. The tales are presented as a collection of stories told among pilgrims traveling to the shrine of St. Thomas Becket at Canterbury Cathedral. They are written in Middle English. Next question. Philosopher, journalist, poet, and author Henry David Thoreau wrote a book about his two years spent where? Was it A, in exile, B, in prison, C, living on a lake near Concord, Massachusetts, or D, in New York's meatpacking district. And that's Steve on team one. Uh, that's C, living on a lake near Concord, Massachusetts. That's, Walton Pond. that's correct. <laughs> the road built a small home on land owned by his friend, Ralph Waldo Emerson, and contrary to the standard of the time, proceeded to work as little as possible. He documented his experience with simple living in a collection of essays titled Walden or Life in the Woods. Next question. O. Henry's 1906 short story, The Gift of the Magi, tells the tale of a young husband and wife facing the challenge of buying Christmas presents for each other despite having very little money. What presents did they buy? Was it A, a kitten and a puppy, B, a watch chain and a comb, C, a belt buckle and a necklace, or D, a pair of dressy shoes and suspenders. And that's Steve on team one. Uh, it's B, a watch chain and a comb. Very good. <laughs> the Gift of the Magi is a timeless story of love and sacrifice. Jim, the husband, sells his prized heirloom pocket watch to purchase a fancy comb, kind of hair ornament, for his wife, Della only to find that Della has sold her hair to purchase a fob chain for Jim's watch. <laughs> All right, next question. Which flower is the main subject of the William Wordsworth poem, I Wandered Lonely as a Cloud? Is it A, a gardenia, B, a rose, C, a violet, or D, a daffodil? <laughs> Wasim, team two. Um, I'm going on a wild guess here. I'm going with D, Daffodil. Your wild guess is just right, Wasim. It is a Daffodil. <laughs> Wordsworth's most famous poem about daffodils was composed in 1804, two years after he saw the flowers while walking by Ulswater Lake on a stormy day with his sister. Let's update the score. And the score is Team 1 has 10 points. <laughs> In the lead. Now let's find out a little more about the contestants from Team 2. Down on the end, we have Wasim Amashadani. Very good. Tell me a little bit about yourself. Wh what part of the city you're from? A little bit about your why you're here at CCP? Um, born and raised in Iraq, uh, or born in Iraq, raised in University City, rather. Um, I'm going to CCP just because I got sick of being a carpenter for 12 years. Um, 
stick it in a given school one more try, and if it works out, maybe I'll be able to make a bunch of money <laughs> writing a piece of paper. Oh, I'm supposed to be looking over there. Hi, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Wasim, I understand that you are quite successful here at the college and that you've won the Judith Stark Creative Writing Award, a very prestigious award here at the college, not once, but twice. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Uh, yeah, I basically got lucky. Um, <laughs> I just, uh, I had to write a couple of things for uh, classes in the school and um, my teachers said that they were really good. And so I decided to enter them. Um, I won a uh, first prize for a play that I wrote in about an hour, and I won um, honorable mention for a nonfiction piece uh, that I wrote in my coming out of uh, 098 class. So anybody who thinks that they might have something to say, I suggest come to Community College of Philadelphia for the English program. <laughs> very good, very good. And we have Matthew Hall. Matthew, tell me a bit about yourself. Where are you from? And what brings you here to the Community College of Philadelphia? Uh, I grew up in Connecticut. Um, I uh, first visited Philadelphia uh, while I was in college. Loved the city and decided to move here uh, when I got out of uh, my undergraduate degree. Um, I was a teacher for a number of years, about 13 years, and uh, decided to come back to the Community College to change careers, uh, to change career to photography. Excellent. What, uh, what did you teach? Uh, I taught English. Very good, very good. And you have two daughters. Would you like to say hello? Hello, Lyra. Hello, Charlotte. I hope you're being good. <laughs> very good, very good. And then on the end, we have Bonita C, I correct? So. Hi, Bonita. Tell me a little bit about yourself. What section of the city are you from, and what brings you to the community college? I'm currently living in University City. I'm a behavioral health and human service major. Um, my ultimate goal is to <coughs> excuse me, become a um, social worker and work with children. Excellent, wonderful. I understand that you are a full, that you are a student ambassador. Can you yes. tell me a little bit about that? Um, it, I was selected um, out of a number of students to represent, Phil, you know, Community College of Philadelphia. It's quite an and honor. We, yes, it is. Yes. Do you yes, give tours? Is. Do you? Um, so far, I haven't given any tours, but we represent the school at different functions, like political functions and whatnot. Excellent, excellent. Sounds like a real honor. Congratulations Thank to you. you and welcome to all of you. <laughs> now we're going to take a short break and when we return, we will begin round three. Welcome back to Show Off, the quick thinking academic quiz show on CCPTV, the educational panel of Community College of Philadelphia. I'm Jocelyn Circus, Director of Professional Development. I'm sure that you noticed that team two is not on the stage. That's because round three is a little different than the two previous rounds. The third round is a little different. Each team will be answering the same questions. So team two is in isolation right now, so they don't hear the questions in advance. In this round, each team is given one and a half minutes to answer up to 10 questions. After hearing the question, they will discuss and answer among themselves, and the captain of the team will give the answer. If they are correct, the team earns one point. There is no penalty for a wrong answer, and they may choose not to answer the question. Okay, team one, are you ready to show up? Oh, yes. yes. <laughs> so let's get started. You have a minute and a half. Ready? The name of Kanye West and Kim Kardashian's daughter shares the same name as one of CCP's regional centers. What is it? Northwest. Very good. On April 15, 2013, a bombing occurred in which U.S. city that hosts the world's oldest annual marathon? Boston. Boston. Correct. The untimely death of Trayvon Martin sparked a national campaign to end what law? Stand your ground. Correct. Which brand slogan is just do it? Nike. 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 Correct. This stadium was the former home of the Flyers, 76ers, the and Wings until 1996. Correct. <laughs> what city and state is the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame Cleveland, located? Ohio. Very good. Who plays the part of Cruella DeVille in the 2000 film 102 Dalmatians? Uh, Glenn Close. Very good. Close. Catching Fire is the 2013 sequel to what adventure movie? Hunger Games. Hunger Games. Very good. <laughs> Which mysterious British street artist has been leaving his mark on the streets of New York? Very good. <laughs> on which TV show would you see the characters Willow, Xander, and Giles? Pass. That's it. Is and that last one the Vampire Diaries? 
It was Buffy the Vampire okay. Slayer. Oh, I, so. I was like eight. <laughs> Very good. You got nine out of ten. Yeah. Team one, you've got nine out of ten. Okay. Team one, your score now is 19. Congratulations. When we come back, team two will be joining us. The third round is a little different. Each team will be answering the same questions, so team two was off stage while team one played the game. Now it's team two's turn. In this round, team two will be given one and a half minutes to answer up to 10 questions. After hearing the question, they will discuss and answer among themselves, and the captain of the team, Matthew, will give the answer. If they are correct, the team earns one point. There is no penalty for wrong answer, and they may choose not to answer the question. Okay, team two, are you ready to show off? Yeah. yeah. Let's get started. The name of Kanye West and Kim Kardashian's daughter shares the same name as one of CCP's regional centers. What is it? Um, North, North. Northwest. Northwest. Correct. On April 15th, 2013, a bombing occurred in which U.S. city that hosts the world's oldest annual marathon? Boston, Massachusetts. Correct. The untimely death of Trayvon Martin sparked a national campaign to end what law? You want to pass? Oh, goodness, pass, uh, pass. Which so brand sure. slogan is "Just Do It"? Nike. 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 Correct. Nike. Nike. This stadium was the former home of the Flyers, 76ers, and Wings until 1996. Yeah. Uh, spectrum. Correct. What city and state is the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame located? Cleveland. Cleveland, Cleveland Ohio. Correct. Who plays the part of Cruella Deville in the 2000 film 102 Dalmatians? Glenn Close. Correct. Catching Fire is the 2013 sequel to what adventure movie? Uh, the Hunger Games. Correct. Which mysterious British street artist has been leaving his mark on the Banksy. streets of New York City this past month? Banksy. Correct. On which TV show would you see the characters Willow, Xander, and Giles? This is the last question? Last question. Just check this out. Yeah. Ooh, and you're out of time. Okay. The answer to that one was Buffy the Vampire Slayer. <laughs> Very good. Team two, <clears throat> you got eight right. So now your score is 24. <laughs> Congratulations, team two. The score is team one with 19, team two with 24. Now we're ready for the show-off showdown. In this last round, each team has wagered an amount of their current point total on getting a correct answer. If their answer is correct, the wager is added to their current point total. If they are wrong, the number is subtracted. Each team will have 30 seconds to discuss and come up with the correct answer. Okay then, let's go. Here is your show-off showdown question. How many lines are in a traditional English sonnet. Teams, 30 seconds. Time is up. Team one, your team is trailing behind by five points, but you have the chance to make it up. Tell us what your answer is. Uh, well, we wagered 19 points and we answered eight. Oh, that is incorrect. The correct answer is 14. Let's see, team two, did you get it correct? 14 and team two, that's the correct answer. How many points did you wager? 15 points. And the score is now team one with zero. They waged, they wagered it all, and team two has 39. Yay. Congratulations, team two. And thanks to both teams for playing Show Off, the quick thinking academic quiz show on CCP TV, the educational channel of Community College of Philadelphia. 
I'm Jocelyn Circus, Director of Professional Development at CCP. Thanks for watching. See you next time.